Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Do You Want to Become a Leader of Change? My name is Fiona, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. The, the webinar will last for approximately 30 minutes. All attendees are on mute, so the only voices that you should hear throughout the webinar will be mine and the presenters. You'll have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect these and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. I would now like to introduce Jill Kelly. This afternoon, she'll be talking through wanting to become a leader of change. So I'll hand you over to Jill. Thank you. Thanks, Fiona. Hello, everybody. Um, my name's Jill Kelly. I um, am a member of CIM, uh, a fellow of CIM, a chartered marketer, uh, currently director of a CIM accredited study centre, and um, holding the postgrad diploma in marketing. Uh, very pleased to see this new uh, development in terms of level seven. Um, qualification, the marketing leadership program that I'm going to talk uh, about today uh, that will carry on the tradition but bring us um, up to date and ready to face the next five to ten years in terms of what marketing um, is demanding of uh, leadership. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, first of all, I'd like to get to know a little bit about you as an audience. Um, but once we've moved on, it will, uh, I want to talk you through the background, so how the Marketing Leadership Program evolved, how it came about, some of the background there, um, the benefits that it offers to you or anyone who works through the Marketing Leadership Program, um, who it's targeted towards, and what it will cover in terms of uh, the way it's structured, uh, the way it's made up in terms of content, um, and how it's assessed. A little bit about the Charter Institute of Marketing, and then, as Fiona said, we'll move on to a uh, question and answer session and where you can go to find out more about this exciting new development. So first of all, um, a little bit of information about you, please. So in terms of your marketing career, if you're in marketing, how many years of marketing experience do you have? Um, so you will see a poll in the moment. Do you have one to five years? six to ten years experience in marketing, 11 to 15 years, or 15 years plus. Okay, so we, we're seeing mostly um, 15 years and 15 years plus, which is great. Um, it's targeted at people who have got significant experience in marketing, um, uh, and so that's good to know. So most of you uh, here with us today, 15 years plus. Um, and now a little bit more uh, about you. Your role now, this is going to be uh, a bit subjective, but if you can pick the closest um, of the titles you'll see here in terms of which is closest to your role in terms of your marketing um, role now. So are you marketing director or chief marketing officer? Are you a chief customer officer? 
a senior marketing manager, marketing manager, senior marketing specialist. So we're seeing uh, many more specialisms now. So communications, digital, marketing analyst, etc. Or a marketing specialist. So those last two, senior marketing specialist or marketing specialist. Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, so far fewer chief customer officers um, or specialists. Uh, we're seeing uh, many more marketing managers and senior marketing managers being closest to the role. Some marketing directors, chief marketing officers. So um, that's, that's great. Good to know. Um, one last one. Uh, in terms of your interest in attending today, are you attending to find out more for you, yourself, um, or members of your team? So you take a, a second just to indicate on that one as well. Oh, wow. Very personal interest then. <laughs> the vast majority um, here to, uh, out of interest for yourself and your own role. Um, okay, again, good to know. So let's, let's move on from there. It's also good to know you're the right audience, so we've, uh, we've positioned ourselves correctly today. Um, and we're talking about leading change. Uh, I'm sure you've heard as well, there's lots of talk at the moment about the only constant we have to deal with is change. Um, things are constantly uh, changing in the world of marketing, in the business world, and uh, we feel, and we're sure you'll agree with us um, once you see more detail of this program, that um, it's been built to deal with the issues that are keeping marketers awake at night. Uh, so let's see as, as we move through. So first of all, a little bit of background. Um, for those of you that, that don't know, this um, just adds on to our qualification progression. We have already the Foundation Certificate in Marketing. Uh, for people who are new to marketing or non-marketers, aspiring marketers, entrepreneurs. So uh, at level three, if you're familiar with the, uh, the levels um, of study, the foundation certificate. And then the certificate in professional marketing for marketers who are um, practitioners with maybe a little experience. It may be a marketing assistant, marketing executive, uh, someone aspiring um, to stay in marketing or to specialize in marketing uh, moving forward. And then we have our diploma in professional marketing, extremely popular uh, managers who are in operational roles, uh, managerial roles. Uh, and these can be, uh, again, specialists, product managers, brand managers, account managers, uh, business development roles. And now, just to, to top it off at level seven, uh, which is a master's level uh, program, the marketing leadership program for uh, just the audience we've got present today, so experienced marketers working at a strategic level. But actually, business owners, consultants as well, and a little more about that as we move through that, that background, and people that are aspiring to, to work at these levels, and uh, with some provisos, and again, I'll explain those as we move on. So how did this program come about? Um, if you're not aware, we've had a postgraduate diploma in marketing um, that has been in existence for some considerable time at level seven. And uh, the perception, our research um, showed that this, the perception of this was that it was very academic. Um, it didn't do quite enough to help uh, people apply what they were learning. And the research identified gaps in the market as well in terms of um, 
leadership and the skills needed to, to lead at strategic level. And that research was undertaken with employers, senior marketing professionals, as well as the wider business community. So we, we wanted to gain quite a broad view of, um, of what was looked for, what was wanted, what people were um, desiring to move on to if they'd gone through a, a diploma in professional marketing or had spent a considerable number of years in marketing and uh, wanted to sort of hone their skills. Uh, the research also pulled out that there's a growing need um, for businesses to operate responsibly, um, sustainably, to build um, strategic marketing plans um, that help them to compete in a challenging business environment, whatever the, uh, the business objectives were. Master's level study remains attractive. Um, so although we are looking at a postgrad diploma um, at level seven, which was perceived as very academic, um, master's level study was still very attractive, particularly if those credits can be um, collected over time and can be used to extend that study um, at a later date. And for those of you that are familiar with the lower levels of qualification, you'll have seen that over the last couple of years, CIM have developed qualifications um, based on our professional marketing competencies, the core competencies supporting some mandatory modules of study, um, and electives that cover the more uh, specialist areas. And that that theme also came back in terms of the research, in terms of uh, people were looking for more manageable chunks of learning, for being able to study in an order that suited them, to be able to fulfill a gap in their knowledge or skills when they needed it, rather than um, doing things in a programmatic way um, and having to wait maybe uh, 12 months down the line to gain the skills that they need today. So two mandatory modules in this uh, new program and a choice of electives. At the moment, a choice of two, uh, but the intention is that those will grow later. And um, worthy of note, the research also showed that um, people at this level of study welcome the opportunity to network with other individuals to talk about um, challenges and problems that they were all coming across to discuss those, to share ideas. Um, and that was very important. So for that reason, the recommendation when, when um, CIM have talked to accredited study centers about delivering this program is that it should have a fair degree um, of face-to-face -face learning, um, which facilitates that ability to network with other individuals in a similar uh, situation. Okay, so what are the key benefits? We believe that um, one of the key benefits is the fact that it was based on extensive research. This was the industry telling us uh, what the gap was in the market. And we know that there are competitive products, um, but we're sure you'll agree as we work through this program that we have differentiated ourselves. There's nothing quite like it. There are programs which are much shorter um, and don't go into the amount of depth. There are other programs that look in quite a specialist area, um, but we, we truly believe that ours is the only one which will equip a leader for change in the strategic marketing arena um, given enough depth over a period of time so that this um, it gives that level um, that's necessary for the master's level credits. So say I'm engaged, we've already talked a little bit about the research um, with employers, with senior marketing professionals. And um, it will support those professionals within the business that are looking to uh, make an impact, um, to be competitive in a customer-orientated organization. 
Um, and should work cross-sectoral. And, and actually, there's a lot of value. Uh, I can remember my study and mixing with people from other sectors. And my sector was one of professional services back then. And it was extremely useful to share information and ideas for people who came from manufacturing, from pharmaceuticals, from other areas, so that I could look at an idea and look at the way they solved a problem and uh, what parts of this might I be able to apply in my own sector that we'd not thought about because you potentially get into a rut of thinking, I'm professional services. Uh, this is the part of marketing that applies to me. Um, uh, these are the models that I've studied and learned as I've moved through. And, um, and actually, there are other ways of viewing things. And these models that uh, were put in front of me uh, last time I studied, actually, I can see how if I tweak them here, or work with them or um, alter them there. Yeah, they could work. They could work for me, even if traditionally they're, um, they're not put forward as for professional services. And, and achieving real benefits. And this, I'm sure, is what the research was finding still in that networking with other professionals who are facing similar challenges but have come up with different solutions so that sharing of experience and knowledge um, can help. So who's it for? Um, we've touched on that very briefly already. Uh, marketing leaders. So people, people are already in role as marketing leaders, but actually want to have that opportunity to network, uh, want to look at, okay, I've, um, I've become a little complacent maybe, or maybe I need to put some more formal framework around what I'm doing um, and look at how uh, I would benefit. Market, and this is particularly important, marketers operating at a strategic level. Um, this is particularly important in terms of the assessment. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a moment or two. But even if you are an aspiring marketing leader, so not leading at the moment, you need to be able to uh, complete the assessments at a strategic level. So you may need assistance within your organization, an agreement that you can apply um, the challenges that, face, uh, that are posed in the assessments at a strategic level. So if you're aspiring, uh, you need to bear that in mind. The market is looking for a master's level qualification that is very strongly practitioner-based, hands-on. Um, the, the whole ethos behind this is that a lot of the knowledge that you'll have already, um, we're looking at learner-driven, so leader-driven learning. We, were, we see ourselves as here to facilitate that learning, to point you in the right direction, um, to help you to find the, uh, the answers to these problems. But to enable you, in terms of your practice, to solve the problems for yourself. So it's a different style. So anyone who is moving on um, from the diploma in professional marketing, you will find there's a different style of learning um, and a different approach that is applied here. Um, and we mentioned, and you'll see why in a moment, I will get to it, that actually this program uh, is suitable for business owners and entrepreneurs and also consultants. So let's have a look at um, how it's made up, the structure, um, and talk a little bit more about the assessment. So two mandatory modules, and you'll see they're here at the beginning of my um, equation. So the first one, contemporary challenges. All of these modules are the same size. They all attract 20 master's level credits. Um, and each will demand about 200 hours of study. So each module about 200 hours of stu study. If um, you're studying this as we're recommending um, through a study center that says about six months for each of these modules, that will equate to six to 10 hours a week. So it's going to be tough. However, um, the flexibility of the structure allows you to study what you need now um, and 
and then if necessary have a gap before you move on to the next module. This will depend on the study center you select and what you're looking to do. So I'm talking about the program and how it's been designed. Each study center, and a little bit more about those um, in a moment, but each study center will have designed it slightly differently. But the design of the program itself allows for, for example, um, let's take someone who is being tasked with achieving significant business growth. You may well want to tackle the elective managing business growth before the rest. So you might want to do that module first. Uh, then you will need to shop around across the um, eight accredited study centers that uh, are delivering this, this program from January this year and find out whether you're able to do so. We know in terms of practicalities with new programs, um, for all of us as study centers, it may be that we haven't the resource to build all four modules up front. But you may well find that, uh, that one of the centers is already in a position to offer that module. So let's take our marketer who's tasked with managing business growth over the next six to 12 months. If you can find a study center that's offering that module, you can sign up for that module. You can run um, over a six-month period, develop your, um, your skills and your practitioner skills in that particular area. Be selective. Be um, driven by the tutors, the course directors who are working for that study center. Um, led to the different models, the different ideas, and network with your peers in the group to... Um, help you actually apply those skills in the workplace. And to help you do that, the assessment um, are based on live issues in your workplace. So again, just to go back to reinforce, when we were talking about this is suitable for aspiring strategic leaders in marketing. And in theory, you can move immediately on um, with a diploma in professional marketing. At level six, you can move immediately on to this program, you will need to be able to access um, an issue on which to base your assessment within your organization. So you will need probably wider support within the organization, um, maybe an internal mentor that will help facilitate and that will help you select a live issue on which to base your assessment. So the overall pro program is flexible. The two mandatory electives are contemporary challenges and leading change. And then the two electives that are available now are consultancy and managing business growth. So two mandatory plus um, one elective will give you the CIM Marketing Leadership Program. Each module, though, can be studied, uh, studied independently uh, and provides an award in its own right. So the assessment's been designed not just to help you apply your newly found skills or hone existing skills, make them, uh, hang them on a framework, make them more appropriate in the workplace, but it also gives your organization immediate payback if they're funding your qualification. Um, immediately, they're seeing a problem solved in a new way, perhaps, uh, and it also makes it more relevant and helps you transfer your learning to work. So rather than finishing the module, submitting an assessment which was vaguely um, linked to uh, what you're doing in the workplace, but strongly linked to the syllabus of the module, this will enable you to select a live project and um, focus your assessment on that, so immediately transferring some of your learning to work. The whole CIM Marketing Leadership Program is unlikely to be achieved in under 18 months. So we're suggesting that around about six months for each of those programs, so people starting now may well do their first assessment in June, uh, their second assessment in December, and the third, whichever order they're, uh, they're working through the program, the following June. But again, um, have a look at the different study centers. They will have different structures um, that they're uh, offering.
the, the program. Okay, let's have a look in a bit more detail about the, uh, the at each module and uh, what it contains. So the first one, contemporary challenges. We ran a competition to win a place on the first module of our marketing leadership program free of charge. So 33% saving. The task we set was to respond to the following statement in two and a half thousand words. The way customers think and behave today will drive more change in the way organizations create and deliver value in the next five years than over the last 20 years. So quite a broad, open um, statement, but linking to a number of the key, key challenges, uh, the changing thought processes and behavior of customers, the way organizations now can create and deliver value, and the speed of change. We chose our winner because the entry she submitted followed the above stages without even having seen the syllabus. So she chose as the um, example that she works through to, uh, to demonstrate the, the statement, to respond to the statement, <coughs> sorry, she checked chose digital, mobile, and emerging technologies, as well as the availability of multi-channels for engagement. Uh, went on to talk about competitive positioning, customer centricity, the need for the organization to be sufficiently agile to succeed. She mentioned the need to develop systems to use data to understand changing customer behavior and frameworks to engage with digital channels. Value could be created through the integration of digital activity with existing marketing activity. And for her company, um, putting education at the heart of promotion and targeting customer segments that were identified as resonant with the brand and open to changing attitude and behavior. Impact on performance was explained using the fact the strategy needed to be developed to ensure emerging technologies were used, market insights were developed linked to behavioral psychology and elements of micro-segmentation. Um, and finally, data analysis and metrics were recommended to develop insights for continuous improvement. Great, you know, definitely a contemporary challenge and, and, and met. And this was before um, she, she's coming on to the program. So the content of contemporary challenges, it's not just, if you're familiar with the current postgrad, this is, um, there's a temptation to think that this is very similar to uh, the first module of, um, uh, of the current postgrad, and the title of which has um, gone from my mind at the moment. That just shows I'm thinking forward in terms of contemporary challenges. Uh, emerging themes, it's called. <laughs> But Contemporary Challenges takes things a stage further. Yes, we're critically analyzing the changing dynamics of the organization's environment. We're looking at what the key business drivers are for organizational success. And we're evaluating the relevance of emerging market challenges to the organization's future direction. So we're saying, <clears throat> okay, what's going on? How's it impacting? What are the key drivers in, uh, for our organization? And, and what are those emerging marketing, uh, market challenges in our sector and um, presented to our organization's future direction? So very relevant to us. And then it goes on to, to look at critically the critical assessment of the contribution of those challenges to the value creation. So it's not enough just to recognize what they are and how they're impacting and what they're going to do in terms of value creation. Uh, and that can be positive as well as negative. It can, we can be looking at challenges and looking at ways to overcome them. Equal, equally, we can be looking at um, changes that positively impact that we can um, take advantage of for our customers. We'll be looking in the assessment for candidates to demonstrate a clear understanding of the impact. So it's not just looking at the emerging challenges, but what impact are they going to have in terms of performance moving forward? 
and then looking at resource-led innovative approaches to contemporary marketing challenges. So not just knowing about what they are and how they're going to impact, but what um, do we need to do? Um, what do we need to prove? What can we use? How can we measure this? How can we look at continuous improvement moving forward? So contemporary challenges um, are a similar start to emerging themes in the current postgrad, but taking this a whole stage further on uh, and really applying it to um, current business. What about leading change? Leading change, this is the core of the whole program. So uh, looking at the management of business change, but um, getting that understanding of how to, uh, of what the organization offers. So we've looked at the environment. Now we're, we're looking, we've looked at the resources um, that the organization can take advantage of to create a sort of competitive advantage. But now we're looking um, uh, very closely at the management of change, how we lead the organization, how we implement, how we practice, how we look at different processes within the organization. So how can we harness organizational potential to generate and sustain value for all stakeholders, not just customers? Nowadays, we need to look more broadly. How do we use insight, not just how do we collect data, how do we um, interpret that data, um, generate insight, but how do we then use that insight to support innovation, maybe? Maybe we're, uh, we're looking at changing the direction of the, re, um, of the way the organization is going, or we may well be staying the same, but we're looking to in innovate processes to uh, make our whole um, process more cost effective and um, in terms of making us able to sustain for longer the, um, the competitive edge that we have. Looking as well at um, brand equity and corporate reputation, so important these days. Um, looking at corporate reputation and how it can be uh, maintained and it can sustain change. How, um, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head at the moment. If we're looking at corporate reputation and the strength of the brand to help us overcome challenges from other organizations who are taking advantage maybe of emerging technologies to enter a market. Uh, more quickly, uh, we've been well established as long as we are taking care about our corporate reputation and, again, not being too uh, complacent. Customer-facing organizational structures and cultures, uh, looking at how we can use the, uh, the organizational design, the structure, the culture of the organization um, to optimize corporate capability and make recommendations for the use of contemporary practice in effective leading, managing, and influencing of others. This is where the leading comes in, isn't it? You can manage budget. You can manage um, financial resources. You can manage data. You can manage people, but you can lead people. You can lead that team. Um, and actually, this may well, um, I'll cover leadership in a little bit more depth um, a little bit later on, but this is where this program can be different. We're looking at um, influencing others, driving change, using others to deliver that organizational change, taking that team with you. And let's have a quick look at the electives. Uh, first of all, I've, managed, uh, I've mentioned managing business growth. Um, it looks at the sort of dynamics in the, uh, in the market for business growth. looks at how we would determine direction um, and whether we need to change direction, how we can develop organizational competence in order to, uh, to follow that direction um, for growth. And how we build relationships. Uh, this module... Uh, can be delivered 
just for SMEs or just for business to business or just the technology sector, for example. Um, so if, uh, if, some of the study centers are looking to link maybe corporately and run this elective um, as a standalone within um, a particular industry or to help small businesses, there will be that focus there. As well as um, study centers that offer uh, this and an open program giving those uh, benefits that I mentioned earlier about networking, sharing ideas, exchanging um, ideas about how challenges are met. And consultancy, they, this came quite strongly out of the research in that um, this could be the traditional understanding of a, a marketing or a business consultant. So maybe a consultant who's looking to add credibility to their own offering to their clients or individuals working in a consultancy role on behalf of their employer, so with external clients. Uh, we've worked with many companies over the years, but uh, ones who worked with uh, their suppliers as well, uh, where they were working with them in a consultancy role um, to maintain that relationship so that benefited their organization in turn. So consultancy roles can... Um, can be in, in many different guises nowadays and increasingly what we're seeing is people acting as internal consultants within a large organization to, uh, to drive change, to work on a project basis maybe to, to manage change. And this, um, again, the consultancy elective could be done standalone. Uh, if desired, for a particular sector, etc., um, and covers building, developing, uh, building and developing client relationships, scoping out a potential service for a client, um, and making sure you're delivering the client outcome. And we'll cover um, integrity. We'll cover some of the behaviours, building your own personal brand um, uh, to build your credibility with your client group. Okay, so moving forward, where does leadership fit? Marketing leadership program. Um, I read the following in a story on LinkedIn recently, uh, and it just communicated to me, yeah, okay, this is, this is what we're looking at. A trainer was talking about how he was trying to win over an audience while carrying out some leadership training. And he said uh, it, they're a difficult group to engage, and he said in one sentence, What's key to leading people? And there was silence for about 30 seconds. And then someone hesitantly answered, no one cares what you know until they first know how much you care about them. So this is talking about an individual's team and how they're leading them. And he went on to explain, we're in charge. We talk about targets and goals and visions, but our employees don't care about that for very long. We can communicate and engage, but no one really listens. They just nod, smile, and eventually go back to doing their jobs the way they always did. Our employees don't really care about we want, uh, what we want them to do until they know how much we really care about them. And when they know that, they'll care about you. And then they'll listen to you and do anything for you. Great. Yeah? Says it all. So... We're talking um, more about the behaviors. If you're familiar with the CIM's professional marketing competencies, you'll know that there are um, a, a circle of behaviors within those. We talk about influencing. We talk about um, being collaborative, being responsible, being inspiring, being innovative, challenging, commercially aware, entrepreneurial, financially literate. We, um, at the study center I work with, we're going to introduce a self-assessment and a 360-degree assessment based on the behaviors to help build the skills leaders need today. And, and those within our center will link into some hours of executive coaching to help individuals build those skills. Um, 
This will vary from accredited study centre to study centre. And as I said, in a couple of minutes, as we draw the presentation to the end, I'll tell you where you can find more information about the eight study centres that are delivering this programme um, and then make an assessment about which, which programme is best for you. Research. Future Trends in Leadership Development, the Center for Creative Leadership. A um, couple of years old, the research. But this research, again, I think endorses the approach that this program is taking. Um, it, it found that the environment's changed. It's more complex, volatile, and unpredictable. Skills needed for leadership have also changed. And I make no apologies. I'm summarizing here. Um, so more complex and adaptive thinking abilities are needed. Methods being used to develop leaders haven't changed much. The majority of managers are developed from on-the-job experiences, training, coaching, mentoring. Uh, and whilst these are still all important, leaders are no longer developing fast enough or in the right ways to match the new environment. So in the future, what this research is talking about is more focus on vertical development, so developing um, in that way that you can move upwards, um, transfer of ownership for the development to the individual, which is what I was talking about earlier about the ethos of this program, in that you will have a lot of the knowledge, and as a, any accredited study center that you approach will help you access other knowledge that's relevant, but it will be down to you to drive um, your development with the help. So you're taking ownership at this level of study, at strategic level, um, for your own development. And greater focus on collective rather than individual leadership, which fits in again with this ability to network, share, collaborate, um, actually gain from ideas from, from other people and share that leadership role and a much greater focus on innovation in leadership development methods. So different um, ways of developing leaders. CIM Book of the Month, quick plug, The 12 Powers of a Marketing Leader. Um, Barter and Barwise, you can see it on the website. And I understand that Patrick Barwise will also be speaking at the annual lecture of the Levitt Group in the spring. So for those that don't know, the Levitt Group is our special interest group for senior marketers who are also chartered marketers and or fellows of, of, of CIM. Um, but the 12 powers of marketing leader, again, just showing the relevancy and the currency of this leadership theme. So let me just summarize in terms of the benefits to you as an individual of working through this program. The research said it needs to provide all the must-have skills to lead marketing. And we've included those in the syllabus of this program. And not just to have the skills, but actually be able to practice and maximize business impact. So not just plod along, actually look at um, how you're going to deal with major strategic challenges. What is keeping marketers awake at night? GDPR and its impact on marketing practice, maybe. Delivering the required customer experience, maybe. Improving marketing ROI, which one's yours? And it should help you further your career. It will build your confidence. Um, you will build your competence and capability. And through taking ownership, you will be able to, uh, to help build your team um, as well to make sure that you're leading marketing in the right direction. It will help you compete for the best strategic marketing role, which may not be the best selling point if you're looking for your organization to fund you through the program. Um, however, it may be an internal role. And you'll achieve 60 master's level credits that can be used towards other master's programs. And I know that the CIM is, is talking to universities at the moment in terms of who will accept these um, master's levels credits, what they'll be accepted for, um, working on your behalf um, over the next 18 months uh, in terms of uh, what you can do next if you wish to further your, your study even for, um, to a higher level still. 
Why CIM? I guess you know CIM, all of you. Um, but a reminder. Uh, we're there. Uh, we're there to support, develop, and represent marketers uh, and the profession as a whole. We've been here for over 100 years. Um, we intend to, to stay. I won't stay another 100. I personally won't be around that long to see. Um, and as the world's largest professional marketing body, we can offer membership and career development. We offer qualifications. We offer training courses to enhance and support marketing capability and so much more uh, to individual members um, that uh, we're happy again at the accredited study centers to talk you through how it can benefit you as, um, as an individual. I've talked for longer than I planned, um, but thank you. There is a link on this final slide that will take you um, to, to help you find more detail about the Marketing Leadership Program. The contact details are on the site there, as well as the list of the eight accredited study centers. Um, so the, the study centers that are involved in delivery. Um, there's a phone number, there's an email address for further advice. And just as a final point, just a reminder again, as I mentioned earlier, there are competing products, but though biased, we believe ours beats the others hands down. Master's levels points, delivered over a realistic time frame to build the impact on your business, the flexibility to study what you need to know now and then add to it later, and um, the, the help to impact uh, with tools, techniques, and ideas to, to deal with what's keeping senior marketers awake at night. We're sure you'll agree. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drill. Um, we're going to be able to um, answer some of the questions that we've had submitted. So I'm going to mm -hmm. start with a question here from uh, Jermaine. This course sounds good, but how effective is it with uh, CPD and points, etc.? Do you get to accumulate CPD hours, points? Um, it's done on points rather than hours, and absolutely yes. And there's again, there's details of the CPD program um, on the website. And as you're working through this this program, without a doubt, it will help you in terms of building your CPD towards chartered marketer status if you're not there already. And indeed, right. help you maintain it if you are. Yeah. Perfect. Um, actually, leading on from that, we've had a question uh, saying, if I successfully complete this course, will I automatically become a chartered marketer? Not automatically. Um, as far as I'm aware, I, I, I will be corrected, I'm sure, if I'm wrong, but um, it's not automatic. Everyone, I'm a fellow of the Institute, and, and yes, I am a chartered marketer, but I can't be complacent about that staying forever. Um, depending on the level you're at, um, I do a reflection on different learning that I've done each year, um, and I'm pleased that I'm asked to do that. I mean, that asks, adds credibility. It encourages me to to look. Things are changing so quickly. Um, you can't be complacent as a marketer these days, and there's always something new to learn. Great. Um, we've had another oh, question not, from uh, from uh, from yes, Vicky. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she works in the public sector. Shifting our focus on the customer experience, engagement, and marketing is something new for the organisation. Do you think that you can apply this course to this sector? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we've had quite a number through through our own study centre. We've had quite a number of public sector um, people in, and actually that that leadership of change. What she's highlighting there is that they're going through huge change, and this I would see this um, as a perfect program uh, to help, the, particularly the first two modules. Um, and then it may well be that in terms of public sector, they're not looking at um, business growth, uh, but the consultancy elective might be, and I wouldn't know without speaking, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to presume without speaking to her personally, um, but uh, might be the elective to take because that would enable her um, to work as a, an informal, even in, internal consultant to continue to drive that change to be customer-facing. 
We've had another question as well about um, how relevant this would be. Um, from Alison, a self-employed marketing consultant, do you think this would still be relevant to her? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I worked as a marketing consultant for a considerable number of years and relied on my postgrad and my membership of the organization, yes, to add that credibility. Um, but, uh, but this has much more focused uh, content and will help uh, in terms of the skills and actually um, it, it will help enhance practice as well. And the consultancy module in particular, um, I think, is, is designed to... Uh, the consultancy module is designed to help someone in that role develop themselves to present themselves to clients to help present client solutions. But the first two, the... Um, Mandatory modules uh, will again help structure thought processes to to work for um, on behalf of clients, yeah, and with clients. Great. Um, we've had another question. What is the difference between the old Level Seven Postgraduate Diploma in Marketing and the new Marketing Leadership Program? Um, you just stressed. <laughs> you just stressed. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, there, there's an element um, of leading uh, change in the old postgrad. The syllabus of this has been um, refined, designed with um, employers in mind. They've told us how the market's changing, how marketers need to change at that senior level, what new skills they need, um, how they need to prove um, their impact on, on um, business and on whatever the business Business objectives are um, and its leadership um, is the big theme and driving that change through. Um, in terms of the level, there is no difference. It's still level seven, um, but this is much more closely designed for uh, people leading um, and is much less academic. Okay, perfect. Um, a final question. What letters am I able to use after my name after completing the full program? Ooh, now you've got me. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I would assume, and it would be an assumption, that this would be, it would be the relevant level of management, uh, of, of management grade, membership grade, sorry, not management grade, of membership grade, depending on your experience, um, et cetera. But I'm assuming that this will give the same as um, the, the PG dip, so would give those. But I think we maybe need to get a message out to people to confirm that. Sure. That's a question from Maggie. No problem. Um, we do actually have time for one more. Um, someone called Chris has asked, can we take both electives? If so, would this mean that you get 80 credits? The answer, the simple answer is yes, you can take um, both electives. Um, would you get 80 credits? Yes. I can't see why not. However, that may be academic in itself in that um, universities that you take it to may only accept 60 of those credits and depending on the course that you go on to study, they will, um, they will accept a particular elective as the 20 that they've accepted against your future study. Um, I'm, I, again, this is so new um, that I may be wrong with this as well. And you may, we may find, and we're, we're only at early stages at talking to universities at the moment, and we may find that there are some who say, absolutely, yeah, you know, all 80 credits can be uh, put towards the next level of study. Um, okay, perfect. Thanks for that, Jill. I'm um, afraid that's all we've got time for. Um, so if you have any more questions, then please do get in touch with us via email. Someone has asked um, where they could find out more information, and I'll just refer you to Jill's final slide that's still up on the screen, which has got a URL there. Otherwise, simply check out the CIM website, and we'll be able to give you some more information. 
Uh, we would like to let you know that we will be sending out the slides from this presentation and a copy of the recording within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, so you will be able to access the presentation after that time. Thank you very much for your time and have a great afternoon.